Hello my chums, I'm back from the school run, popped into the shops and now I'm home and I don't have to go anywhere for the rest of the day. So I'm gonna have a cozy homemaking day. I'm just gonna sit down, have my coffee and knit some <laughs> I'm knitting some socks for Bill's 17th birthday next week. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Dogs, I'll be back when I've settled them, hold on. So a few things quickly to say is I took Bunny to the vets. Hang on, Margot's twirling. Have you stopped? I took Bunny to the vets and uh, they checked out that lump under her chin and said she needed a bit of dental work doing just some scale and polish. And what are you sniffing my boob for? <laughs> embarrassing. Dogs are so embarrassing, aren't they? Um, and said that they would check the lump when she was under general anaesthetic for that. And uh, actually the lump's gone. So who knows what that was? Probably one of those salivary swellings but it's gone she's fine a little bit of a burk really but she does need to have her teeth cleaned of course you're getting old aren't you we can see all around her face she's getting grayer oh. sorry about the oh stop now they're scrapping sorry about the film quality here <sighs> hang on so the next thing to mention, which you'll all know, unless you've been living under a rock, is a week ago, our Queen, Queen Elizabeth, passed away. And it's been a big deal. Yeah, it's been a really, really big deal. I, I love the Queen, I love the royal family. I know they're not flawless, but <laughs> she was an almost faultless role model. And I don't think you get that very much these days. Her never explain, never complain motto served her very well. I don't think it would necessarily serve the common man very well because um, I think you can bear a burden like that when you have great privilege. <laughs> but I really admired her and I, I enjoyed her and she's, I don't know life without her really. So like many, many, many people, I was more affected by it than I realised, so I couldn't talk about it without bursting into tears, which oh, I thought I'd got control of myself. I'm ridiculous. The amount of times I've wept on this vlog is is crazy. And I know that I could just cut it out. Look at Bunny. I know I could just cut it out, but there's something a little bit, I don't know whether the word is disingenuous. It just... I don't highly edit or highly stage anything in my life and I never want to feel like a fraud or anything but authentic and so if I were to cut out any of those emotional moments it, it wouldn't feel like I was properly I'd feel like I was lying in some way anyway I didn't expect to start saying that so yes, God bless our Queen. This has been a week today. These dogs are driving me absolutely batty. I wonder if the Queen would get frustrated with her corgis. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. It is like living in a circus. Today, I'm gonna have a cozy homemaking day. Peace at last, they've gone to get, uh, peace at last, they've gone to shout at the gate. Excellent. So today, cosy homemaking involves cushion covers. Ages and ages ago, I went through my fabric stash to see if I could find some fabric for Wilf's blinds. And I dug out some and I thought these would be really good to make cushion cover replacements for my sofas in the drawing room. Today's the day, I'm gonna crack on with that. I'm also going to walk the dog and a fancy cucumber sandwich. Can you hear Margot? 
I'm just going to have a cosy day, light all the candles and just do some stuff, which will be lovely. I've got a few things playing on my mind, so it'll be good to do something practical with my hands so that I can think my thoughts, just let them run. The sock that I'm knitting for Bill, I've got to put my arm up there because I'm getting achy now, is it's showing up really true to colour. Yeah, everything's showing up true to colour. That mustard and teal's pretty good. I think the light in here is terrible, so the filming quality is really grainy. This is yarn by my friend Kelly, who is Lay Family Yarn. And this is her colourway, Bill's Special Bus, which was the 2020, it was one of the minis in the 2020 Advent. And she dyed this inspired by the school bus that she helped me raise money for. And one of Bill's favourite t-shirts because they're pretty much the same sort of colours. And um, I'm knitting, it, it's fingering weight, but I'm holding it double. I've got 52 stitches on the needle. He's ever such a small, skinny little boy. 17 year old man child. And I'm going to do... A nice long leg because that's what he likes and then I'm just going to do a big section of rib and then I'm going to do a beanie toe so that it doesn't matter which way he pulls it on the sock will fit his foot he has issues with um that kind of thing getting dressed and stuff being inside out and just you know dyspraxic difficulties so I think he'll love these. He really loves fleecy socks. He really loves them. And I think that he'll really love these. And his feet aren't growing anymore. And I think that he'll take care of these as well. When he loves something, he does look after it. If he doesn't love something, he totally destroys it. I've been making cushion covers. Here we go. I'll show you how I do them. I, I do them like everything, the easy way. <laughs> oh, I've got a phone call. It's Franca. I should, I'm about to take the dog for a walk, so I will call her back then. She lives alone and has got COVID, so I um, just check in with her every day, make sure she's all right, I'm not taking a turn for the worse. So I shall call her back on my dog walk, see if she needs anything. I'm going to empty my peg basket because the best apple tree in the world. I'm filming like that, aren't I? Better than that though. <laughs> you don't want to see the top of my head, dear. Um, distracting myself. Best apple tree in the world is um, dropping its apples. So I'm gonna take my peg basket because it's cross the body basket and put some apples in there. Look at my sunflowers. I had a sunflower that planted itself this year and I counted the heads on this sunflower and bearing in mind I've had two jugfuls of sunflowers like that. Some days having dogs is not as fun as you might think. <laughs> There it is. There's all my washing I need to sort out. Um, oh, so distracted. I'm gonna take the dog for a walk, phone Franco and pick some apples, all right? Come on then. It's slow season. So I picked these slows. When I first got them off the bush, they had this powdery pale silvery gray bloom all over them so pretty oh, i'll have to get rid of that one he's manky slow gin here we come lovely juggly traditionally you were told to wait until the first frost because that made them yield their their juice better but I find that the birds get them. Don't worry, I've left millions there for the birds. I would have filmed the picking of the slows, but I was on the blower to Franca. 
So what I'll do instead, I mean, people used to prick them with a cocktail stick, but um, lately the advice is shove them in the freezer. It does the same job as the first frost. So I'll rinse them, get rid of the bugs. There's a couple in here. I've just seen one crawling around. Um, actually, what I'll probably do is I'll lay them out on a tea towel outside so the bugs can just crawl off and go and find a new home. But I was going to do fancy filming, which I've forgotten to do. Look at this lovely bowl. This is from my, my friend Joe, who I did the basket making with, who is also my pottery teacher. I love that. I don't know why I have to kiss everything. <laughs> well, I've got a lovely big, look at that for color. Imagine that as a skein of yarn, it's zingy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, lovely. Got a good basket of apples. I've got an apple storage crate that my friend Julie, who was the other girl I went for forage basket making with, um, she saw it in a charity shop. She knew that I was after something like that. She's brilliant. She's always in charity shops. I just give her a list of things to look out for. And every now and again, the phone will ring as she's FaceTiming me going, do you want this? It's a fiver. <laughs> Brill. Okay, so I'm going to have a cucumber sandwich in a minute. Hello. And then I'm going to finish making my cushion covers and sort my apples out. Yeah. I love September. I've got overexcited and I've started too many things. Look at the mess I made. My batting for my quilt, my blue and white checked one I showed you in my last video has arrived. I still haven't sorted out the foraging. I've just remembered I have a sourdough ready to bake. I'm gonna bake it look like a pumpkin. <laughs> I'm get some string around it. Need to think about where, where my cooking string is. And I'm still going with the cushion making over there. Um, and there was something else. I've forgotten. I better crack on. It's just, I'm, it's so nice to have a day at home after such a long summer with no one around and no plans and not really having to go anywhere until I do the football run later and the school run. So I've just, yeah, a bit enough more than I can chew really, but never mind. Oh, it's only a bit of foraging, some cushion making and a loaf of bread and a cup of tea. That's perfectly achievable. I mean, it's not like a board meeting and an Excel spreadsheet, is it? Nope. Let's give this a go then. On you down. Right, actually it's looking a bit pants. It's not risen as much as normal. I went back to doing my kneading of my sourdough in the mixer because Farmhouse on Boone, who I love, has started doing that again. Right. Oh, I've done it wrong already. Hang on everybody. Silly me, this is what I'm like. I'm constantly getting things wrong. Oh look, I've just printed out a Putney sweater by my friend Amy. I think if I knit this jumper, I will end up, I'll look like that. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> so I've got some baker's twine. I mean, I'm assuming it's called baker's twine that you can bake with it. <laughs> Hang on. So the idea is, I'm getting in a tangle. You make a star. Oh, I think that's a lot of, Never mind. Oh, look at me, I'm in a mess. Why is life so hard? 
I think you need four bits of string. I'm just going to do six actually because mine's a tiny little loaf by the look of it. Let's put that in the middle there like that. Okay, now I'll get this out. Put that on there like that. Then you tie these into the middle. I don't think you can see a thing then, but never mind. You can see what I've done. Just gonna cut these fruity tassely bits off. Gonna shake some uh, flour all over it because I've noticed that when people do that, they get more distinction in their little cuts. I think this is gonna be rubbish. This is like half the size of normal. my little razor blade out to cut some patterns just keep it simple oh I haven't done the what do you call these the pies I don't know very evenly the gonna get that in the oven Get that cooking. Cross your fingers for me, everybody. Have a cup of tea. So I'll show you how I've done my cushion covers. Oh, hang on. The light had gone really funny. These, the tops of these are what I already had. And the backs, look how dirty that's got. Ugh. The back was just this really thin calico-y stuff and it just made it look a little bit flimsy, slightly cheap because they were cheap. I've got some loose threads there. And I got some of this really lovely high quality fabric from the Emily Bond fabric sale. The, the Emily, the Emily. She lives up the road for me. She, her kids used to go to the same, my kids used to go to the same school as her children. She had a house open, an open morning to sell fabric. I'm really struggling with my words. Forgive I. It's because I had to unpick this one. So I'll show you what I do. Let's just move those babbers out the way. I cut out my square that will fit the cushion pad inside. But this was obviously already done for me. Then to make the envelope, I cut out two pieces of fabric that will overlap each other on the back. So you can see this is one of them. And all I did was I folded over twice the raw edge and did a row of stitching. And I'm now just Give it a dig then, Margs. So what I will do is I'll just spend quite a bit of attention. I'll give it quite a bit of attention to make sure that the edges all meet up. Otherwise, you have to unpick them because you'll miss bits. And then you will end up with bits of cotton sticking out like I've got here, which is a waste of time. And then another flap smaller I've done this one because it didn't need to be as big and just line it all up like that and then you're going to sew all the way around the edges like that just whiz round here's one I did earlier there we go so I stitched all the way around the edge and you can see here, I've also used my overlocker just to neaten up the edges. Uh, and that's it. And then you turn it inside out and you stuff it with your cushion pad. Voila. And while I'm in here, I sort of regret doing this because how am I going to cut it from the toast? <laughs> it's going to be a funny shape. 
and also it's risen quite nicely i think that this would have been a really good just standard loaf because look it's bust out there and it's bust out there never mind that was fun um if i was still an instagrammer i would be getting a cinnamon stick and poking it out the top there maybe i will just for the thumbnail on this youtube if i've got a stick otherwise i'll have to get a stick out the garden wrap the end in tin foil and poke that in there <laughs> and then i can put it with my there we go shove it with that that could be quite good fun playing around with that tonight if i get a minute bugger it fell in It's not Thursday anymore, despite appearances, because I'm... Oh. <laughs> I've got you in my tripod thing. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> um, I've got the same dress on that I was wearing on Thursday. It's Saturday now. I actually wore something different yesterday, but I've just thrown this on today because um, I'm doing chores this morning. Gosh, it sounds really echoey in here suddenly that's all about anyway the kids are home I'm doing chores and um, I want to finish what I started on Thursday the day just ran away with me you know how it goes um, but I'm still making cushions so I've got this stripy fabric which will probably send your eyes do lally pip and I didn't have enough to do two envelope cushions which is what I wanted so I took the zip out of the old cushion cover that is, it's gone really threadbare now, and I've done a zipped cushion. The most simple zip cushion ever. Not harder than an envelope cushion. You just need a zip rather than just fabric. Um, so I thought I'd show you, what's happened to my phone? I thought I'd show you, uh, how I do it, I'm trying to pick out these threads, look, because Margo, oh, shut up. The way you do it to do this zip is you have um, this seam closed and then you seam rip it open. Are you talking? I am talking to you, I got something to say. Don't, don't listen to her. Why not listen to me? Right, first things first is you have to measure your cushion. Mine was a 61 centimetre square cushion. So I will be cutting out two 63 centimetre square squares. Square squares. From this bit of fabric. I cut myself off there because I had more I wanted to say. But my friend is at the Shepton Mallet Flea Market this weekend and she sends me photos now and again of things that she thinks that I might like because she's one of my friends, well, she's the only friend who I say, oh, if you see such and such on your travels, will you let me know? And she does, she's brilliant. Um, she's like my own little personal shopper. <laughs> So two things I wanted to say about these cushions is if I'd got enough fabric, I'd have done some piping, but I don't. And secondly, given myself a centimetre seam allowance and making the cushion cover the same size as the cushion pad, it hasn't worked quite well because these are old cushions. They're losing their plumpness. So um, it's it means that the cushion covers a little bit baggier than I want it, which is gonna be easy for me to fix with the one I've already made, but I can add that fixture into the making of my next one. So I think I'm gonna cut these down to 61 centimeters and do a one centimeter seam allowance and see if that gives me a better fit. I'm slightly tempted to do a 60 centimetre. Let me have a feel of this. It's quite a lot of, 
I'm going to cut 60 centimetre squares because I would rather have a really plump pillow when it's plumped up than a soggy one. 60 centimetres. That's what we'll start with. And then I need to walk her because she's just coming around me going, hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm, hmm. You want walking, don't you? You want to go out, don't you, darling? You want to go out? Constantly wagging your tail. It's how you stay so fit. Wish I had a tail to wag. Here, I've got my two squares cut out. And since my overlocker is set up and it's got the correct colour thread, I have overlocked the edges because this fabric's quite fray-y. But it's fine. And I've stitched. You can just about make it out. I think I've done over a centimetre there, maybe a centimetre and a half. I've stitched the two together. If I was being fussy or had plenty of fabric, I'd have, oh look, that's so close, that pattern matching. I could have, I did have enough fabric to fanny about. I probably did for both of them, but I just, I didn't. I just didn't, all right? Anyway, done that. So now, I'm gonna flip it open and Press open this seam. So I've got my little cute little iron here. I'm just gonna open up the seam. You can do it just by finger pressing. This fabric's pretty well behaved. Once you've got your seam nicely flattened and pressed, get your zip. This is my zip that I've just rescued. <laughs> the state of me. The way I work out of this. It's, been, it's a nice um, cushion cover, but you can see it's all the, that's not too bad, but all the corners are fraying now. So you get your zip and you basically eyeball it. I'm eyeballing everything, I'm not measuring much. You centralise it onto the seam so that your teeth are on top of where the seam meets and then pin it on. There, that's all pinned on. And I've left a part of the zip open here. That's just so that when I'm zipping along, zooming along here, stitching, I'll get to a point where this is in the way. So I'll leave my needle in through the fabric and I'll just manipulate this. It's Sometimes it's easier than others. I'll just, oh, the other one was easy. I'll just shove that out the way a bit so that I can continue stitching. Um, I don't suppose that's necessarily the most important thing with a zip like this. This is what I mean. Oh, it's, let's see if I can turn off that light. That's better because it was flashing. Um, so I've got to this point and what I want to do is try to push that um, zip, whatever it's called, Margot, stop digging. Margot, stop digging. So I've got my zip foot on. Margot, stop digging. She digs everything and she ruins everything. Right, lift up the presser foot. And now it's probably not going to work because I'm on the phone trying to record. I'm just going to try and push that up and out the way there it goes it's going guys I've got up. <laughs> um, whoops hold on bear with me okay it's out the way now that was the best bit of film I've ever done if you're lucky I'll have cut it out but if it amuses me it will stay in so we're just going along can you see this with the zip foot, they're shaped so that they snug in really quite nicely to the teeth of the zip. I'm not worrying too much. I'm just getting close, but not too close. Got to be ever so careful when you're sewing. I did this the other day. I pushed too hard. My finger slipped and I went under the needle and I stitched into the side of my finger. 
when you get to the end of the zip just twirl it around and then you need to do some backwards and forwards things on the end what on earth what is it what's happened i can't do this with you on the phone what happened was the presser foot was still up right i've just done some backwards and forwards things there and now i'm gonna leave the needle in and twirl twirl my cushion panels around and fly down the end of edge of here meet you back at the kitchen table in a minute i couldn't get this zip zip pull if i remembered its name to move back down so i've got a really wobbly line there so if it looks terrible I'll just do another little stitch along there a bit later on. But it doesn't matter for now. And who's going to be looking that closely? These are my cushions in my house, in my home. So if you're here, you'll be sitting on my sofa. You'll have your feet up, a nice drink in your hand. We'll be talking ten to the dozen. And you won't notice that my stitching is rubbish. Wobbly, inconsistent doesn't matter does it my room is such a mess okay so now we're going to unpick the stitching that's held these seams together this seam together we'll be able to do this with one hand and my tripod's in the other room i, was, I should have gone back to the kitchen table there we go, seam is unpicked and there is your functioning zip. So leave it open a bit, close up the squares, line up all the edges and so whatever you've decided your seam allowance is, whatever you've decided your seam allowance is, just start sewing. I've put some pins in there just for demonstration purposes. You just sew all the way down, all the way around, until you get back up to this side. You just have to pinch it all together. These overlocking threads are in the way, aren't they? But just pinch it all together till you've got a nice seam. And then you're done. Okay, let's just turn this cushion cover the correct way around and hope that I got my measurements right. If it's too small, I'm not worrying about it. If it's a bit too big, I'll just redo those three seams that I just did after the zip. I really like feather cushion pads over and above the foam ones. One is because it's a natural product and a, usually often a byproduct from the food industry, so it would, would be going to waste. And also, I just like the way they plump up and I like how they feel. I think that's all right. So I've got some loose threads I need to attend to. What is that noise? Oh, one of my babies is awake. Who's awake? Let's go and see. Hi Lucy. Hi Lucy. Hello. Oh, hi. I can't come to see me. You don't mind me. Oh, you are so sweet. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna climb out. Come see me, shall I get you out? so pretty I know I've got the best hamsters in the world it's been confirmed yeah hello sweet girl oh you're lovely hello Timmy's heard me and he's awake let's pop you in put her back in good morning Timmy doing under your wheel? Have you come out of your coconut? Come on then. Hi. Have a little drink. 
I'm not very good at filming because I'm looking at the hamster, I'm not looking at my camera. You're biting your part bars, are you? You're climbing. What are you doing? Look, love them. You coming out? You coming out? Come on then. Oh, precious. Look at his little face. Look at him. What a little face. He's got the best feet. Can you see? It's like he's wearing little white bootle velvety socks. Oh, you're lovely, aren't you? Right, let's give you both some treats. Lucy's still climbing. Honestly, these hamsters are absolutely incredible. They just, they come to their name. <laughs> they hear my voice and they wake up to see me. Of course, the boys are fed up with them, but not me. They're over a year old now. Hopefully I'll have another year with them. It's been the best, hasn't it? We've had best. There we go, all done. The colours just aren't showing up correctly. I keep wondering, should I get a proper camera? Ooh, gone the wrong way. Just so that I can show things more accurately, but then just don't know that that's the colour. I just don't know if I would be able to get my head around it. So I've got new one there, new one there, there and there. These are old. You can see that they're completely threadbare now. See? Uh, so I need to get some fabric to replace those that coordinates nicely with these two. These two go lovely together. Be nice to get some sort of check, I think. And then over on this side, I've just whipped up these two. Yeah, again, that's not showing properly. It's a real beige and navy blue and it's showing up wrong, wrongly. No, never mind. I've got enough of this fabric to cover these cushions, but I don't know if it'll really go right. I, mean, I don't want matchy matchy, just want a sort of coordinating, but I think it's too pale. Looks better in real life than on the screen, but I still think it's too pale. I don't think I've got anything else in my stash. So all that's left for me now is to say, see ya. I've absolutely no idea how this vlog is gonna go when I put it all together cross that bridge when I come to it but thanks for watching along and I rarely say this but I'm gonna bite the bullet I would really love it if you enjoy my channel I would really love it if you could um, leave me a comment just a full stop or a emoji um, click the like button and maybe the notification bell as well because I think I would like to grow my channel especially now that I don't have a fundraising, a gambling, small scale gambling license to do fundraising. The only money I'm really getting for Bill's old school is from my adverts. So I'd like to grow my channel so I can get more people on board. And listening to everybody else, apparently hitting the like button doesn't only help my channel to grow, it helps YouTube algorithm to know what kind of content you like and um, interacting, interacting with one another and with me in the comments and clicking the bell really helps the algorithm pick up my um, channel and promote it for me. So very awkwardly, I shall now say cheerio. Oh, I, hope I hear someone coming. Oh, wow. It's Bill! I always bring the hamsters upstairs. Well, I quite like having them downstairs because oh, I get to see them a lot more. She's in her bed. She was out just now. I gave her some apple. No, she's not. She's not in her bed. 
Oh, she's there, and she's hiding and by the side of her wheel, look. Oh, I think she likes skinny moves. Smart hair, well, it is when you've not been slept on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, oh. bye everybody.